Hi everyone, this is Mike89 and this is my Columns 3 tutorial. Uh, Columns 3 is a versus puzzler for the Sega Genesis. Uh, the game actually has a really good uh, demo mode that explains all the basic mechanics of the game, so uh, we'll jump straight into that before we talk too much about strategy. Uh, so, join your guide for this demonstrarian. Uh, so, start off, you probably think it's a little bit like Tetris. You've got a pit where you drop pieces into, uh, you move left to right, hold down, they move down fast. So that's about where the similarities end. Uh, in this game you can't actually change the orientation of the pieces at all, you can only change the order in which they fall. So uh, pressing B will rotate uh, the pieces downwards. So the blue would go here and then here and then back up to the top. Um, that's, the, that's the only way in which you can change the piece. You can't lay it down horizontally. Um, in this game, uh, making clears um, adds points to this number here, uh, and that's your attack meter. Um, whenever that number gets up to 10, uh, you can start attacking the opponent. So to start off with, a basic clear of three gems in a row horizontally, vertically, or diagonally, is worth three points to you. Um, this one here, where he get, he clears four vertically, one, two, three, four, is worth six points. Because what it does is it counts, it counts that uh, four as one set of three and another set of three. And it gives you the points for both of them at once. Yeah, so now, now uh, you can see his points is above 10. Uh, each attack is worth a multiple of 10 points, depending on how many you have. Um, and then you use either A or C, and that attacks your opponent. See, it took 10 points off the meter, so he's now got two, and it added a row of garbage to the stack. The other thing it does is if um, the opponent's piece is currently uh, not on the stack, if they're trying to drop it, um, it gets destroyed and you can't, you lose that piece. So that can be a handy thing if your opponent has that flashing gem for instance, but we'll talk about that a bit later. And it talks about the multiplayer stuff, we don't need to know that. Um, so now the next thing it talks about is chaining. Um, the game calls it breakthrough, but being a Tetris attack player I'm used to calling it chains. So um, the piece so the piece gets put into place, so here's a diagonal line for the yellow ones. Uh, that's that's worth three points as a basic clear. Uh, when you then get another clear, uh, as a result of that first clear, so these three purples clear now, uh, you then get a bonus of four points. So this second one's worth seven, you'll see it go from five to twelve, and then the four greens will clear here at the bottom, and again you get uh, both sets of three, and then an eight point bonus on top of that. So this third clear is worth fourteen. So from that one that one move, you've gone from two points in your uh, crush meter to 26. Uh, the that meter actually maxes out at 30, so you don't want to you don't want to run it too high. Uh, if you clear three different colors with the same in the same move, you also get uh, the flashing gem that you see there. Uh, if you make a clear that includes a flashing gem, uh, interesting effects happen to the opponent's board. So in this case, uh, what's happened is that the board is now entirely in black and white. Uh, you use colors a lot to understand what move to make next in this game, so that's a really uh, annoying <laughs> thing to have to deal with. Um, there are several other effects that, that they can have. Uh, they can reverse, it says this is only one of many things it can do. Uh, one of the things it can do is ch uh, flip left and right. 
so holding right will push your piece off to the left and vice versa. Uh, one of them can vertically flip the screen, so what's at the bottom appears at the top, all the pieces fall from the bottom to the top. Um, the worst one is if, um, oh, you can also have your next piece disappear, which is a bit of a nuisance as well, because again, you're looking for your next piece, you're trying to use that to make your move before the piece actually appears. Uh, the worst one that can happen though, is if nothing appears to have changed, but then you try and rotate your piece and it won't let you. Uh, it actually locks up the B button and won't let you rotate the pieces. Uh, that's actually really terrible because it builds up your stack very quickly unless you just happen to get the right orientation straight out. Um, so moving on from there, the next thing that the game talks about is the flashing stone. This one here calls it a magic stone. Um, now in the original columns this was three, just three squares. So uh, it, get, it gets to the squares at the end. Um, if this piece is on the bottom, which is the standard orientation. Uh, it will actually push your crush bar down three levels, so all of those will disappear. Uh, if you have the upright triangle at the top, it'll push the opponents up two levels. And also destroy their piece. As though it was a as though it was a twenty point attack. Um, if you're familiar with regular columns, uh, you'll know that the square causes any uh, it causes the piece that it touches and then any piece of the same color to disappear. Um, if if you then get um, if you then get clears this way, they're not worth any points. So there's almost no reason to ever use that. You would only ever use it as a purely defensive move. Um, that's about that's about it for the demo. It does go into one thing about a um, a super flashing gem, but uh, that never comes up in single player. That's only for multiplayer. So we'll uh, we'll bypass that and we'll go straight to uh, some gameplay. So I'm going to bring up my uh, current single segment run. And I'm going to find you uh, two different uh, two different playthroughs uh, of what a stage looks like. Okay, so first first thing you want to do, obviously, because chaining is worth more points, you want to chain as much as possible. Uh, every stage, I start with a simple setup to get a three chain. So the first thing you want to see is that your next piece has two of one color in it. In this case, purple and one of the other color, in this case, of any other color, in this case red. Uh, you want to you wanna orient the piece so the odd color is in the middle and set it up like that. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put another purple one here and that's going to be the last part of the combo. Uh, then we want to build reds this way so we'll put a red one here and then instead of putting a red one here which would um, complete the combo We'll then put it. We'll put it here instead. Uh, so then we can build something underneath it. Uh, whatever color ends up being below the red in this particular piece, you then start uh, lining those up out this way. So I'll show you what that looks like. And so now we're looking for blue pieces. Here's another blue piece. Uh, and then the blues clear, and then the reds, and then the purples. Uh, that's that's the very basic um, three chain to start around. As you can see, it's worth 21 points. And then immediately, you can attack with it and start pushing the crush bar up right away. Um, any piece you'll have noticed, there are a lot of pieces I didn't want there. Um, any piece you don't want, you just have to find a way to put it away somewhere, uh, somewhere that's not uh, blocking your next move. So there's another three chain there. You're trying to, you're basically trying to make three chains as often as you can. 
Uh, it's not the easiest thing to do all the time, but basically what you want to be trying to do is, uh, so see for example the yellows here, the yellows in this row, um, and you'll also notice that the opponent has <laughs> their screen flipped. Uh, so clear, uh, making a clear of greens, say through here, will um, obviously cause the yellows to drop and uh, get you another combo and that'll be worth extra points. Um, the, the main thing you want to do is you want to only be looking for one color at a time. You want to keep this really simple. So at the moment I'm looking for green. So if I don't see green I'm not putting it I'm not putting it over there. So green is going there and then green is, oh I ended up changing my mind. Changing your mind is not a thing you should do. Uh, you don't want to change your mind, you don't want to hesitate. Just stick with one move. Make a decision, stick to it, commit to it. Um, you'll also notice that I'm uh, using points quite liberally, so as soon as I get 10 points I'm basically hurling them straight back at the opponent. Um, you don't want to waste points. Uh, if you let them build up too long and you're, you continue to not use them, remember that your points cap at 30. So even if you're on say about 15 and then you get a combo that you're not expecting, that could push you well over 30 and that those would be wasted points because you can't get them back. Um, So, more combos, and then that's that's worth two points. Ah, uh, you'll notice actually, um, once any once any um, column gets higher than the top of the screen on one board or the other, that's the end of the round. In this case, however, none of the none of them are actually above the top of the screen. Here, they're at the top of the screen. Now, in most cases, you can actually continue playing from that, but all the pieces first appear in the third column. So if the third column reaches that height, then, well, you'll see what happens. The piece tries to appear here, can't, and the stage ends. Um, for each opponent, you actually have to beat them twice. So you'll see here I have kind of a bracelet thing there. Uh, that denotes uh, a round win. And then when you get the second one there, that's the match win. Um, that basic strategy will get you through most of the game, to be honest. Um, the one thing that you do have to worry about is that some of the opponents from about round six onwards um, don't mind using an attack uh, as, as a direct response to one of yours. So you'll hit the attack button and they'll use theirs immediately in response. Uh, what that tells you is you don't want to have a useful piece out when you're attacking because then you'll probably cop one right back and you'll lose your piece. Um, that is most of that covered. Uh, so I'm going to jump ahead to the Sphinx because the Sphinx is easily the most difficult part of this game as you'd expect with it being the last stage. Uh, You'll, you'll be able to see, as the, the match progresses, that both of us are moving at about the same speed here. So I'm getting my purples, purple, then red, then blue. Didn't quite line that up right. So you can see how much um, a 30 point attack like that changes the whole fight because not only does it add 3 bars to the opponent's crush, it takes 3 away from yours. It really flips the balance of the, of the match. Um, this is, uh, this is the o generally speaking this is the only stage in which you'll see them. So this is where I decide to talk about the items. So I've, I've had an attack against me there and I'm like trying to work out what it is and now I've worked out that it is that one attack I talked about uh, where my rotation's locked. 
Uh, conveniently, I actually have one of every single type of item here, so I can explain all of them. Um, so, the magic bell will clear every um, will clear every gem in your playfield. Uh, that's actually really terrible. You don't want that to happen because um, uh, unless you absolutely have to, you would never use the magic bell because that means that the entire board is cleared and you would have to build up all your gems from scratch. Meanwhile, the Sphinx is hammering you with attacks over and over and you can't defend yourself against them while you're building your stack back up. Uh, much more useful is the heavy weight. The heavy weight um, removes all of the garbage from your side of the screen, but not any of the gems. Uh, the magic gem uh, causes one of the silver flashing gems to appear. Uh, the barrier prevents you from being attacked for about 60 seconds. It lasts a long time. Um, the, the reason it's not the best item is that you can't uh, use it retroactively against an, uh, an, an attack that's been used against you. Uh, the, therefore, the best item is the antidote, which uh, removes the effects of the last attack. Uh, so, in this case, I go straight to my antidote, and I can rotate my pieces again. Uh, so, so here I'm I'm actually about to die because you can see that the Sphinx is about to attack me with the upward crush, and this is the only opponent that does this. By the way, everything else likes to use their um, their gems defensively. So you can see I've I've realised I'm just about to die. I'm gonna use the heavy weight, push my bar, push my crush bar back down, keep myself in the game. Unfortunately, the Sphinx really likes to take your um, really likes to take your pieces off you, uh, your flashing pieces. Uh, so you really don't want to be in a position where he's got ten or more, just as yours is coming out. But conversely, you want to be you want to be doing that to the Sphinx as well. You want to make sure that when his next one's coming out, that you've got 10 points to play with. Uh, where What can help you, actually, is having a look at the smaller numbers down at the bottom here. Uh, the smaller numbers are the amount of clears you've got. And for every 20 clears, one of those flashing stones will appear. So if you take a sneaky glance at this one, say, and you notice that it's around 18 or 38, uh, then then it might be worth saving up some points. Uh, one one last thing about the attacks as well, by the way. Um, so, you can't actually launch an attack right now. So, at the moment I have 14 points, but uh, the entire stack needs to resolve and your next piece needs to start coming down before you can launch an attack. And that might there might be a better example of that in the in the second round here. So just watch this match and see if you can kind of keep up with everything that's going on. This actually is quite an interesting start because there's a lot of purples here and you don't want to actually make chains in that area. That's that's why you don't want to hesitate. If you hesitate, you'll lose your piece in this fight. So, we're only looking for one color at a time. So right now, looking for purple. Now we want red. We get our three chain. Alright, now we want orange, because that will make the purples clear.
Okay, purple gives us a clear on the greens and then the reds. And then also the yellows, which I didn't even see the first time. And that completes the round. You just have to make sure that everything is really fast. Alright, uh, that's, that's all. If there's anything that's not clear, let me know. Um, and hopefully you'll get to see this screen sometime soon.